marketplace in 2023, you're not going to find a DDR dog, purely a DDR dog. You might have a dog where there's a significant ancestry of five generations, six generations back of pure DDR dogs, but you can no longer have a DDR dog because there's no more DDR registry. By definition, you cannot have a DDR dog for that reason alone. So now, the next type we're going to dis discuss is the Czech type. Now, I still say Czechoslovakia because if you have a dog from Slovakia or you have a dog from the Czech Republic, remember, the dogs don't know the country divided. <laughs> They're, I still say Czechoslovakia because that country was one country from World War I, 1917, all the way up until very recently. So for 75 plus years, Czechoslovakia was one country and the dogs in Czechoslovakia were one. Now, how is the Czech type similar and different from the DDR type? Well, the Czech type is derived from the DDR type. When the Berlin Wall fell, a lot of the East German dogs went to the Czech Republic. Now, why particularly are we discussing the Czech type? Why, for example, are we not discussing the Romanian type? Romania was an uh, East Eastern Bloc country, so was um, Hungary, for example. Why are we discussing? Why are we not discussing Hungarian dogs, or Romanian dogs, or Soviet dogs? Why East German dogs, or in particular their derivative, the Czech dogs? The reason is is that the breeding in Czechoslovakia for, uh, was controlled by a kennel, uh, which was. Uh, managed by a man named Norbu, I can't pronounce his name properly, last name properly, so I don't want to mispronounce it, but there was a, basically a kennel called the Pohrašanea Straze, or the, East, the Border Patrol dogs. So these dogs were literally technically bred to keep drugs and cocaine and heroin traffic out of the Czech Republic. In reality, they were used to keep the Czechs from escaping to the West as opposed to stopping the flow of drugs into the Czech Republic. So these were military dogs. They were bred with a military purpose in mind. And they are a tough, strong uh, working type. Now, over the years, to make them easier to handle, they were mixed with the West German working type to increase their prey drive, makes them better sport dogs, because a sport dog has to have a lot of prey drive. A personal protection dog has a lot of defense drive, may not have prey drive. If you throw a toy, they, may have, they, may, they could care less. They don't want that, whatever, that's a toy. But a, 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 but a sport dog will maybe shake his head, shaking that toy, because a lot of prey drives. And that's a desirable quality in a, in a, work, in, in a sport dog, particularly. So the check that to some degree represents a blend of the East German type and the West German type, but there's a heavy influence of the DDR type in the Czech type. So a lot of times the bloodlines are so intermixed, I will discuss DDR type and Czech type as almost being the same thing, realistically speaking. I mean, technically they're different, they're not identical, but from a practical point of view, the Czech type is the only remaining continuation of the DDR type that we can find nowadays. A lot of the Czech dogs are pure sable, uh, they're bicolor many times, or pure black. You will not find black and red uh, in the Czech type very often. So that's the second working type, the Czech type. The third working type is the West German working line. Now the West German working line is probably the closest to the original German Shepherds that were originally created by Captain Max von Stefanitz. These are dogs bred for work. Um, They are the dogs you see used by the police. They are the dogs you see used by the military. Um, the Belgian Malinois has been uh, replacing heavily the German Shepherd in police work and military work. It's lighter, it's faster, 
and it has less hip and elbow issues in terms of orthopedic problems. And so you see the Belgian Malinois, to a lesser degree, the Dutch Shepherd, its close cousin, replacing the German Shepherd as the premier working dog used by the police and by the military. Uh, I think the reason for that is not because the German Shepherd is any worse than it ever was. I still think the German Shepherd is the better breed, in my opinion, I'm biased, I'm a German Shepherd breeder. I think it's a more balanced dog, I think it's more of a general purpose dog. It's an overall utility dog. You want it to be a sheep dog? Fine. You want it to be a working dog for the police? Fine. You want it to be a family pet? Fine. A Belgian Malin was a family pet? I don't recommend it. You, you have to have a lot of knowledge to handle a dog of that nature. It is really a good working dog only and not a pet. By contrast, a working line German Shepherd can be a family pet and then you put on its collar, say time to go to work. The dog snaps into a different mindset and it goes to work. So most police officers do live with their German Shepherds uh, that they use every day for work. So um, it is much more flexible and utilitarian as a breed. It is a breed that is a very noble breed. Um, so I think the German Shepherd will come back as the premier police and military dog. Now why do we see a decline of the German Shepherd in military or military duty? Well, because you see the German Shepherd show type take over. That's the dog with the roach back, like a like an elephant back. These are the very good looking black and red dogs you see in the show ring, but they're only fame to claim is they're good looking. They're bred for looks. They're not bred for nerves. They're not bred for ability to protect and still have a protective nature or a protective instinct. Uh, they're bred better than the American show type because they're still the shoots and trial as a standard. Even a watered down trial is better than no standard whatsoever. Uh, the American show line, uh, which was German only 75 years ago, at the end of World War II, or 80 years ago, roughly speaking, is no longer a German Shepherd. The American show line, let's talk about that, the ASL, the, there is this, no distinction between males and females. In German Shepherds, males are distinctly masculine and females are distinctly feminine. In the American show line, that's really not as prominent. You see dogs with a lot of weak nerves, which are fear biters, being bred. You see dogs which have weak hocks and the dogs walk on their hocks. On my website, there's an article, I'm going to put a link below you will see an article describing the American show line. You can see how visually it looks differently from the working types. The, the difference in looks when you see them next to each other in photographs is amazing. And I'm not going to repeat these photographs in this video because I'm referring you to the website in order to see for yourself. There are literally hundreds of articles on the web describing differences between these types. Now, so to summarize, are the working types from different countries that different? Well, they used to be. Uh, the Czech working type and the West German working type and the DDR type were distinctly different in temperament characteristics that you could definitely point to on a regular basis. Uh, now, why do we care about the Czech type as opposed to the Romanian type or the Hungarian type? Because Czechoslovakia made all the people which had dogs pay a big license fee if the dog didn't have shoots and titles. So because they thought at any time if the country has to go to war, it was like on a military footing as part of the Soviet bloc, it thought, well, we better have dogs which are capable of being recruited into the army anytime we need to. And wouldn't it be good if all the dogs in the country already have a foundation in bite work? So they made all the pet people, the regular Czech people, 
put their dogs through a training program of Schutzen essentially to get them titled and if they had titles they wouldn't pay a tax and so owning a pet dog was then therefore cheap because the tax you paid was negligible but if you didn't title your dog you had to pay a lot of tax and that's how we're talking about the Czech dogs versus Romanian or Hungarian or other Eastern Bloc countries. This demand by the government that in order to have a dog license, your German Shepherd must be trained and pass a title, in fact made the whole gene pool stronger. Because if every dog in the gene pool passes this test to get a license, well, you're creating a stronger gene pool. Whether, you, whether directly or indirectly, that's what you wind up doing. So that's why we're talking about the Czech type as the premier Eastern Bloc type, as opposed to some other Eastern Bloc nation. I thought that little bit of history should be, you know, interesting to you. Um, so, what can we say about the West German type, and when did this type separate between the West German working type and the West German show type? Let's talk about that. I'm going to look up an article, I'm going to put a link to that article in this description. In Germany, in the 1970s, there were two brothers named the Martin brothers. Uh, they, one kennel was called the Weinerau kennel, and Walter Martin had the Weinerau kennel. His brother, Hermann, uh, had the Armenius kennel. In 19... Uh, the, the, in the 1970s, there was a, if I remember the dates right, there was a dog named uh, Kanto Weinerau, which was the foundation dog of the West German show line type. What they cared about was that gate where the front paw would touch the opposite leg, and there was left to right of the back paw, and the front right to the leg of the back was touching each other when the dog was trotting and they would slow down the videotape and you would see that. So they were looking at trotting in a circle of how the dog trots as if you're judging a horse. <laughs> how does a dog trot have anything to do with its working ability? The reason they were doing this was because there was big money to be made and by the 1980s uh, West German show types which were very good looking dogs were selling to uh, Japan and then later China for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You heard that right. A German Shepherd would sell for 100000 in the 1980s. And remember, in the 1980s, a house cost 45000 So people bought dogs for 100000 So the market in, in the East caused the sale from Germany. And so they, uh, the SV president from 1984 to 1994 10 years, Herman Martin was the president from 1984 till 1994, was a proponent of this new type. We shouldn't call it the German Shepherd. We probably should call it the Martin Shepherd because the Martin brothers were responsible for the downfall of the German Shepherd. And up until the 1970s, there was not that much separation between the show type and the working type. So the first separation in the breed happened in 1945 uh, after the fall of the... Um, after the fall of the Nazi Germany, but the second separation that we can really readily point to is the 1970s under the president of DSV. I would say the corrupt president of DSV. That's my opinion. Um, so that is what caused... Now I'm going to look at my computer screen here. Uh, so in 1986 and 1987, the dog we care to mention is Quando Vam Van Arminius. That was one of the foundation heads of the show type. By 1992, there was a dog named Zamb van den Weinerau. And by 1996, there was a dog named Vicius van Arminius. So, these and Kanto Weinerau earlier, in the late 1970s. So basically, the 1970s and early 1980s was when that tremendous shift between the working type, but there was always a, sh a difference between the show type and the working type, but that difference was not that small. Show types could work and working types had good confirmation, they were not ugly. Uh, not to say they're ugly today, but I mean the difference in confirmation was not that significant. But in the 1970s that difference really exploded. 
and that's when you see these over exaggerated uh, longer front legs because of the need to pace in the show ring you see an over arch back because a dog with an arch back doesn't get tired as easily when it's going around in a show ring running in circles and circles and circles while the judge watches the movement and the only requirement is the dog look pretty the Schutzel requirement is watered down remember so that's when you have the show type now what about mixing a show type with a working type and wouldn't that restore the breed back to its former glory? The answer is, maybe that has to be required, but the answer is, I find that the answer, that doesn't really work. And the reason that doesn't work is because you're not getting the best of both worlds. Let's say you breed a very strong working type male to a beautiful show line female. Now, and let's say the puppies come out sable. You have puppies which look like working types because they're sable. Typically show types are never sable but they don't have the nerve strength to handle the drive. In other words, the working types are high drive dogs. The show types are more mellow and more manageable. So you have the drive of the working type, but the weak nerves of the show type, which can't contain that much drive. You wind up with a dog wired wrong mentally for it's confused in its genetics. It wants to work, because it has a lot of prey drive and both types are intelligent and can be trained in obedience but it's in the protection phase that you see the difference and in the degree of nerve that you see the difference um, so you have a dog which looks like a working type but doesn't have the nerve strength to back it up or let's say you breed a black and tan working type to a black and red show type they can look similar black and red and black and tan are very similar genetically the black and red, just the E locus has a reddish color, but basically they're going to produce good looking dogs. But are you producing the best of both, kind of in between? The answer is you're not. The dog neither can work, nor is it going to fit the show crowd in what they're looking for. They're not going to get what they're looking for, because what they're looking for is not a German Shepherd. What they're looking for is a specific type of German Shepherd that fits their criteria. I think their dogs are ugly and their structure is totally not, a, not, not like a canine. If you look at a wolf or a, or a hyena or a, not a hyena, a, the African wild dog or a, a hyena is not a, is not a canine. Um, uh, if you look at, for example, the jackal, the, the coyote, the fox, none of these wild canines have a, such a curved back that they can't run and hunt for rabbits or whatever that, that particular animal eats, or deer, it wouldn't be able to run and survive and make a food for it, capture food for itself. Therefore, if you believe in Darwinism, that form follows function, that the animal must have the right anatomy in order to feed itself and survive, then you can't possibly believe this exaggeration of the canine form would exist in nature. So I think, and they pay a lot of money for them, and they're proud of them. So I am not a fan of the show types. I've seen them uh, be very nervous dogs on many occasions. The so-called reactive dogs that are very um, uh, aggressive without being provoked. Uh, these are not good dogs. This is a shadow of the glory of the breed as it, as it once was. The German Shepherds of the 1950s, 60s and 70s are not the, uh, the dogs we see in the show lines. So. Uh, the breed has significantly changed and uh, please go to my website where I have an extensive article on this topic and I hope you find this video educational. I hope you subscribe to our channel and I hope this was useful to you. As you search for your next puppy, you have to understand there are five types. Two show types and three working types. The difference in the countries is not as great anymore. All working types now breed toward the same goals. So dogs from Czechoslovakia or West German types are not really that different anymore. They used to be, but not anymore. They're just all working types now. So anyhow, I hope this was useful. Take care. Please subscribe.
Talk to you soon.